Hello and welcome to this Wednesday, September 20th edition of the X106 podcast. I'm Ryan Elliott, joined by Evan Brown as always. Today we're going to talk a little bit of Major League Baseball, getting into the playoff race. Going to talk some NFL, and we're going to talk some college football. So let's get started with Major League Baseball. Uh, Evan, we've got some teams in races, especially in the National League. As far as the American League goes, we already have two of the divisions clinched between the Indians and the Mm -hmm. Astros. But in the National League, let's start there with there's a race, not much of a race in the West, Dodgers have already clinched that. Washington's already clinched the East. But there's a race in the NL Central. Uh, Three and a half games back of the Cubs are the Milwaukee Brewers. Six games back of the Cardinals. A game back of the wild card are the Brewers. Three and a half, the Cardinals. And then in the Mm -hmm. West, Arizona and Colorado are actually the two wild card teams right now. So let's talk a little bit about this race and who are your favorites to make the playoffs either in the NL Central or as a wild card team. Uh, well, uh, last night we actually had a major league record broken, uh, most home runs ever hit in an MLB season. Um, so right off the bat, I mean, you, you got to look at that Colorado team. Uh, they got a lot of home run hitters on that team, and I mean that's been the trend all season. A lot of home runs, you score a lot, and they've got a pretty good bullpen too. Uh, they are they are a, a two lo- or a losing streak right now, only two games, but you know, eighty two and sixty nine. You look at that record. Uh, Milwaukee's right on their trail. Milwaukee with Eric uh, Thames, I think that's how you say his last name. Uh, he's been on a tear all year, and uh, you know. Colorado for me is my favorite to win that second wild card spot. I think Arizona's kind of got you know the first one uh, pretty handily. They're I think four and a half games above Colorado, um, but yeah, just you know looking at that Colorado team, I'd say they are the favorite at this very moment to uh, get that second wild card spot. I think I agree with you. Um, I, I think the favorite would be the Rockies. I think they've got the most complete team of those of those three that are vying for that second spot: Colorado, Milwaukee, and St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Um, Look out for Milwaukee. Look out for the Cardinals. Both of those teams um, uh, playing relatively well right now. The Cardinals six and four in their last ten. Milwaukee eight and eight and two in their last ten and Mm. won three in a row. Um, The one thing I'm looking at though is the race for the NL Central. I think the Cubs almost have the Central locked up right now. Three and a half games ahead of Milwaukee. Six games ahead of St. Louis. But they still have a three-game series left with the Brewers and a four-game series left with the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. The Cardinals have a three-game series left with Milwaukee and a four-game series left at home against the Cubs. So there's still time for the three of these teams to move around quite Mm -hmm. a bit. Um, I know the Cardinals are barely, barely hanging on to hope that they are going to have a chance to win the NL Central. You'd almost have to win out. Yeah, the chance will be better that they take that second wild card spot, but it's the same amount of teams that they have to hop over to get there. Yeah. So I think because you play so many more teams, if you're the St. Louis Cardinals, because you play so many more teams in the NL Central and so many more games against Central opponents in these last few games of the season, I think you have to look for that first. Mm. But if the playoffs ended today, in the National League we're looking at Washington, the Dodgers, rather, the Dodgers the number one seed. Washington the two, mm-hmm. Cubs the three, and the two wild card teams that would have that play in game being Arizona and Colorado. So the winner of Arizona Colorado plays the Cubs, or no, winner of Arizona Colorado plays the Dodgers rather. Mm. Washington would play the Cubs. Yes. In the American League, we're looking at right now Cleveland being the number one, mm-hmm. Houston the two, Boston winning the East and being the three, and then the wild card teams the Yankees, and the uh, Minnesota Twins. Mm. So the winner of Yankees-Twins would play the Cleveland Indians. Boston would take on Houston. Yep. Um, so given those current playoff pictures, pick pick your AL and NL championship series. Ooh. Who's, okay. who's playing in the ALCS and the NLCS by the end of it? Uh, you know, I, I'd probably have to pick Cleveland. I mean, the tear that they've been on, what, what 22 straight about a couple weeks ago. Um, obviously, they're hot going to be, or they're going to be hot going into uh, uh, the playoffs. They're nine and one in their last ten. They're, you know, they're picking up a win streak again. <laughs> they've already won three straight again. Uh, so I, I'd say it's, it's them, and you know, I'd venture to say one of those wild team, a uh, wild card teams. Uh, you know, make it there. You know, uh, Royals esque 2014 run. Um, 
I, I really do like the Minnesota Twins. I really like them. They have been playing um, subpar uh, their their last uh, few few games, and they do have you know the series. I believe it's going to wrap up tonight against the Yankees, um, and that that's a must win for them. Uh, the Angels are right on their tail. Um, they have been playing Cleveland. Um, lucky for them, they lost last night, um, as well as the Twins did five to two. Um, that bullpen honestly looked horrendous. Um, it's been it's been good. Um, throughout the season and throughout the year. Um, but, I mean, uh, you know, it only matters. Uh, if, you, if you have playoff potential, it only matters at the end of the year how well your bullpen does. you got to have that bullpen. you you got to get the holes and the saves, and, and then you're looking to get into the playoffs, and you got to continue that all the way through. So um, I, I do like Minnesota. I like what their offense brings to the table. Byron, Byron Buxton has been on a tear uh, in this last month. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, but then again, you know, the bullpen, they've really got to pick it up and they've got to, you know, get into playoff mode and, uh, you know, really carry this team deep into the, the playoffs if it's going to happen. Well, when I think you look at it, I'll make my picks for the ALCS mm-hmm. anyway. I, I'm looking at Cleveland and I'm looking at Houston, which would be the one and the two seed, mm-hmm. um, because Cleveland is, is the experienced. It, I, it's weird that we're saying this, but yeah. Cleveland <laughs> is the experienced team right now in these playoffs. The Cleveland Indians are the only team that has – recent experience in mm-hmm. an ALCS mm-hmm. among these these teams and so I like the Indians um because they're just as you mentioned they're the hot team right now and it, that's one of the big factors into that goes into who's going to win when mm-hmm. in the playoffs and I like the energy of the Houston Astros they're a young baseball team they've got a lot of energy they've got a lot of very good young players George mm-hmm. Springer Jose Altuve Carlos Correa a, a lot of young guys Dallas Keuchel on the mound mm-hmm. and there's a lot of very young very good talent on that team mm-hmm. and so I like Cleveland I like Houston for the ALCS ALCS I think the Yankees take the wild card game and play the Indians Indians in 5 mm-hmm in that series. I think the Yankees make it close, make it tough on the Indians, but the Indians in five in that series, Houston in four against Boston. And then we see Indians, uh, Astros mm. in the ALCS. Yeah, I let's forgot, sh- I forgot let's to give you shift my to the NL National too. League <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. and, and go ahead and give me your NLCS picks. So, um, you know, the Dodgers have been literally the hot team all year. They reached, uh, I think 90 wins before anyone else like had 85 or something. So, I mean, that's, that's a, I mean, a great tear to go on. Um, but historically, the Dodgers haven't really done well in recent years in the playoffs. And I think the I mean, I don't want to call it a curse, but I think, quote unquote, the curse, uh, you know, reveals its head again. And I don't think they get back. I believe uh, I'm going to see the Chicago Cubs and the NLCS again, just because of that experience. You know, they, you know, the past couple of years, they've been in the playoffs. Uh, they won, obviously. Um, and that's going to go a long way. A lot of those same players are on that team. And you talk about Wade Davis. He doesn't give up. Uh, he doesn't give up saves uh, or he doesn't blow saves rather. Um, and so, I mean, if the Chicago Cubs, their insane offense can, you know, uh, you know, provide a lead for their bullpen and, uh, you know, their starters and everything, then, you know, I, I feel like they are going to make a late run. So I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll say, I'll, I'll say, yeah, I'll, I'll say uh, Chicago Cubs and the Dodgers. And I think uh, the Cubs are going to knock them out. I think that series is going to go to seven. Um, just, you know, um, I don't know. That's just what I think. Um, but, yeah, I think the uh, the Cubs are going to make it back to the World Series. And I think it honestly might be a Cleveland Cubs again. Or Cleveland-Chicago, rather, in the in the series. So we'll see. Interesting. Interesting pick. I think that may be the safe pick at this point. Yeah, it, I mean, yeah. Well, maybe. I don't know. We'll <laughs> see. I I like the... Again, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go one two again and mm. go Dodgers and um, and Nationals. Um, I think the Dodgers get it done this year, mm. as far as winning in the playoffs, making it to, at least to the NLCS. They've had trouble getting past the division series over the last few years. They've mm. ran into the St. Louis Cardinals a couple of times. They've run into the Cubs a couple of times. They've 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 had some trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think they may at least make it through the NLCS this year. I think you know. I think Colorado takes the wild card game. I think they they're just plain going to out hit Arizona in that game. So Colorado takes the wild card game. They play the Dodgers. Dodgers sweep them in three. Mm. Nationals over the Cubs in five. I think it's going to take five um, in that NLDS. Mm-hmm. And so Nationals Dodgers for me 
in the NLCS. So now that we have our ALCS and NLCS picks, let's pick those series. You've got, let's see, you've got Cleveland mm. and Minnesota, right? Yeah, Cleveland, Minnesota. Which would entail <laughs> Cleveland dropping out of the number one seat because they'd play each other in the ALDS uh, if yeah. that were the case. Sorry, that was uh, well, a they, brain it's, fart. It's possible right it now possible. because Cleveland is only two games ahead mm-hmm. or a game and a half ahead of Houston. So let's say they do drop out of that number yeah. one seat and drop to the two and they play Minnesota in the ALCS. Then, I mean, I, like I said, I, you know, I, I love the, the Twins. You know, they've, they've had an up and down sort of year and I'm kind of, you know, kind of rooting for them. Although, because, you know, I, I'd say that uh, the Royals are out of the wild card race at this point. But um, I, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, say that Cleveland is, is going to top Minnesota. I'll probably go f- five games. Uh, just For toss. one series? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's, it's hard to pick against Cleveland. It really is, especially when, you know, Cleveland obviously has the, uh, the season. Uh, you know, uh, they've, they've won more than they've lost against Minnesota this year. So I'm, I'm going to say that, you know, carries over into the playoffs and, uh, you know, they have an easy ride. Okay, and you've got Cubs, Dodgers, in the NLCS. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, I, I say the Cubs. Like I'm not going to go back on it. I'll say that you know the Cubs are going to take that once more, and I, th- I think that one's going to go seven games. I like it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have Cleveland, Houston in the ALCS. Mm. I say Houston in seven. I think it takes all seven. I think it's a just an incredible series. These are two teams that oh, yeah. are, while they're not necessarily similar to each other, they're two teams that are right on the same level as far as talent. Cleveland's got a lot of talent, especially in the pitching rotation with Carrasco and, and Corey Kluber. And Houston, with, with Keiko in the rotation and a lot of talent with the bats, a lot of talent on the base pads with Altuve and Correa can run and oh, George yeah. Springer can run. Um, I think Houston just tops Cleveland in the from a batting standpoint, mm. which really has been the deciding factor a lot this year, as you mentioned, with the home run record mm. uh, being broken last night. Uh, so I've got Houston and seven there. In the NLCS, I've got Dodgers and Nationals, and I've got the Nationals in six. Interesting. I think the Dodgers get to the NLCS, <laughs> at some point realize that they're the Los Angeles Dodgers mm. of the last ten years, mm. and choke. I think they're they're a young baseball team. They're relying on on Bellinger a lot mm. as a rookie. I think their pitching staff has been good, but I don't know if they can sustain that. K- Clayton Kershaw does not have a good history in the playoffs. No. Mm-mm. And I think they're going to have to rely on some other pieces, and I think Washington's going to show up. Washington's going to hit the ball really well, and I got Washington in six in that series. So to cap off this MLB section of our show, let's pick the World Series. You've got Cleveland and you've got Chicago, mm-hmm. a, a rematch. Yeah, I, I mean it's not all that interesting. It's not. It's not such a hot take. Uh, uh, but I mean, you gotta you gotta look at the powerhouses and what's been going on uh, this season. Uh, you know, the Cubs are kind of a question mark at this point. We all expected them to have a way better season uh, than they did last year. Um, just you know, with having Kyle Schwarber back and that sort of thing. You know, they had pieces missing. Or you know they got those pieces back that were missing in the previous year, um, although they did uh, ride the 112 year uh, st- uh, losing streak wave, uh, and, you know, and that's not going to be there this year. So they're not going to have as much buzz around them, and I think that'll play to an advantage. You know, not having an insane amount of media coverage uh, during the playoffs sometimes is a good thing. You know, you don't have you know the nerves kick in that sort of thing. So I think that might play uh, to an advantage for them. So uh, I'll go, you know, it's Cubs, Indians. I say the Indians get the best of them, and I'm going to say that game or that series, 4-2 uh, Indians. 4-2 Indians. So mm-hmm. the Indians get the revenge. Absolutely. I'm okay with that. I am too. I'm, I'm okay <laughs> with that. Uh, so my picks were the Washington Nationals mm-hmm. and the Houston Astros, two teams, two franchises that have never won a World Series. Mm-hmm. Um and the Nationals, a franchise formerly the Montreal Expos, that are one of only two current Major League Baseball franchises to have never appeared in a World Series. So the mm. Nationals have never won an NLCS or, or, or a, a pennant either. So in this matchup, you've got the star power. You've got Harper. You've got Carlos Correa. Mm. You've got George Springer, Altuve, uh, Ryan Zimmerman. On the other side, Jason Worth still playing for the Ast- or the Nationals as well. Um, 
I've got the Astros again in seven. Hmm. I think the Astros are going to play three full series. Yeah. They go five with the Red Sox, they go seven with the Indians, and they go seven with the Nationals and win the first World Series in Houston Astros history, franchise history, um, just because of the young talent they have on that team. I think if if they can pull all that talent together at the right time, mm-hmm. they're going to be really, really tough to stop. Mm-hmm. And so I think if they can, they can keep the bullpen together and get all that young talent together, they will take it. Mm-hmm. And don't forget about that new piece they acquired not too long ago, Jay, or, uh, Justin Verlander. Right, uh, especially right. Especially in the playoffs, that's a scary guy to see on the mound. Yeah, yep, I agree. Okay, so those are our picks for uh, the, the Major League Baseball playoffs, mm-hmm. and uh, it's going to be a fun race down the road. A couple of teams that are still vying for that wild card spot. Most of the divisions are pretty short up. Um, the Yankees still have a chance in the AL East, and of course uh, the Brewers and the, and the Cardinals still with a chance in the NL Central. Uh, but outside of that... Pretty much everybody's short up uh, as far as divisions go. So uh, that's our MLB chat. We will talk about some college football and some pro football here in just a moment. You're listening to the X106 podcast. All right, and now we're going to talk a little bit of football as we are back on the X106 podcast. And let's start with college football. Sounds good to me. And what's happening this week? Um, We're kind of far removed from last week in college football. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's take a look at what we've got going on this week in the NCAA. Tell me some of the games you're excited about. Personally, uh, Oklahoma State has just kind of blown up, blown onto the scene. Uh, Mason Rudolph at quarterback has just been the X factor that they've been missing the past couple of years. Um, and they're, they're taking on uh, number 16 TCU at home. Uh, not going to be uh, well. It's kind of hard to tell. It may be a uh, you know a hard home home test potentially. You know that sort of trap game. Uh, ask um, you know they're, uh, TCU hasn't been they haven't blown me away this season. I'll just say that. Um, but Oklahoma State, I mean, they have been blowing me blowing blowing me away. Jeez, I can't talk all of a sudden. Anyway, uh, so it'll be interesting to see if you know they can uh, take on this ranked team. You know, completely dis- dismantle them and continue to rise on the uh, FBS rankings. I like that pick of of a, of a good game this week. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also looking at Georgia Mississippi State. Oh, yeah. Uh, battle in the SEC, Mississippi State, a team that just absolutely dismantled LSU last <laughs> year. They or Last week, they, they picked them apart. Mm. And uh, I think a lot of people are looking for them to do the same at Sanford Stadium between the hedges in Athens, Georgia. Um, I think Georgia's in trouble on Saturday. I've, I've got Mississippi State in that game, but... Mm. Um, Another game, uh, personally, uh, you just caught my eye. Uh, number four, Penn State at Iowa. And I, now I know that doesn't really sound like, you know, it, it's not a very interesting game. You know, Iowa's, I think, one and one this year. Uh, they they kind of uh, struggled versus their opponent last week. Um, but, you know, playing at Iowa is always tough. Iowa's one of those teams that, you know, they played their opponent. And that can be a good and a bad thing. In this in this situation, you know, that'd be great if they could play to the number four Penn State uh, Nittany Lions. Um, if that does happen, um, might be a potential for a shootout. Their new quarterback, I forget his last name, I want to say Stanley or something like that. Uh, I'll look it up in a second and get back to you. But anyway, he uh, kind of went on a tear last week, ended up getting the loss. But that is another in- interesting game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think there are uh, three other top 10 teams playing unranked teams that might be in trouble this week. Nathan Stanley was his name. I was correct. Excuse me, top 15 teams. Top 15. Not top Mm -hmm. 10 teams because number 12, Florida State, is at home against NC State, a tough NC State team, Mm. a team that's played a couple of of pretty good games this year. That line is FSU by 12.5 because they're at home at Doak Campbell Stadium. Mm. But uh, that's that's a dangerous game. There's, There's some risk involved there for... Uh, Florida State, USC, heading to Memorial Stadium in Berkeley, taking on California, a Cal team that got a good win against Ole Miss last week, a tough grind-out win against a pretty good SEC team. Sam Darnold, a USC team that struggled with Texas last week, had to go to overtime, and they were they were in trouble. They absolutely torched Stanford. Sam Darnold had a great game, 
didn't have as good a game against Texas. So USC's been a kind of up-and-down team, and California at home with a little bit of confidence. The line is USC by 17, but that's a dangerous game as well. One other game is um, Washington heads into Folsom Field in Colorado. Their line is 10.5, but Colorado, a 3-0 and team, pretty solid offense with Steven Montez at, at quarterback, um, and then Philip Lindsay in the backfield as well. They've got a very balanced, very good offense that Washington may have a tough time stopping. Washington hasn't had a great defensive year thus far, mm-hmm. but uh, Washington, another top 15 team at number seven that has a chance of going down on the road in Boulder. So some, some big-time upset chances this week uh, as we see as well Florida heading into Kentucky, um, Oregon at Arizona State, another dangerous game. Um, San Diego State at Air Force. So some ranked teams playing some unranked teams that could be a little bit dangerous this week. Absolutely. Um, another game, um, not really to look out for an upset or anything like that, but I'd really like to see number 19 Louisville, um, you know, kind of get a bounce back game against Kent State. Um, and they've got a potential to see Lamar Jackson just absolutely tear up that defense. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm looking at the Kent State team. I really don't know if there's a lot of guys on that team that are even as fast or, you know, can catch up to him in the open field. Um, so it, uh, a very much, very much so a bounce back game for the uh, Louisville uh, Cardinals. I can agree with that. Um, I think there are a couple of, there are a lot of tough games this week against unranked teams. You know, mm. you, uh, again, we talked about some of the ones earlier, but you also look at a uh, Michigan team headed to Purdue, uh, um, a team that just put it to Missouri last week. Oh, um, now, ugly. given that's a very poor defense, <laughs> Michigan's got a lot better defense than Missouri does. Mm-hmm. But Purdue looked pretty good in that game. Um, you know, LSU is at home against Syracuse. We mentioned Penn State and Iowa. Auburn heads to Columbia to take on Missouri. Uh, if somehow Mizzou can, after after firing the defensive coordinator and and trying to get things together, maybe they can pull that defense together and at least give Auburn a tough game. So a lot of good games this week uh, in college football. We'll be looking forward to a lot of those. Let's shift a little bit in the football world and talk a little NFL. And once again, preview this week, maybe look a little bit back at last week as well um, around the NFL. Give me a second to get this up. Um, one game, obviously, um, that people are kind of looking at are you know the Chargers and the Chiefs. Um, it, it's at, I believe it's uh, in L.A. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, um, Chiefs 2-0, and obviously. Um, and I looked at the power rankings recently. I believe we're number two, still behind the Patriots somehow, which you know kind of rubs me the wrong way, but that's just because I'm a Chiefs fan. Anyway, uh, you know, the Chargers have been on the wrong end of uh, a couple games this year. Um, but, or, uh, you know, I could see that being a trap game. Um, in the past, you know, the Chiefs have had difficulty with with the Chargers, uh, maybe, you know, in five years or so in the past. Uh, it should be interesting, though. I mean, the, just the way that these Chiefs have been playing the past few games, you can't really imagine they'd lose to anybody. But, you know, that that chance is always there. They're professionals for a reason. All these guys are, you know, real great players. Well, and you mentioned, yeah, two big wins to start the season over the Patriots, over the Eagles. Um, I believe, and I, I don't mean to correct you, but I believe the number one team in the power rankings is actually the Atlanta Falcons. Mm. Above the above the Kansas City Chiefs. Which one did you look at? The uh, the ESPN, the oh, ESPN was, power rankings at that I've Report. seen anyway. My bad. <laughs> um, well, Bleacher Report Bleacher, Bleacher Report does tend to like the Patriots. Though, yeah, that's so. true. Um, but the the power rankings that I've seen, I've seen the Falcons over the Chiefs. But the Chiefs still at number two. The Chargers, though they have two losses, they're two very very close losses, both yes. on blocked or missed field goals. Mm. Um, so that's it's a good football team. They're heading into Los Angeles into a twenty seven thousand seat stadium, which is a little bit different for an NFL team mm. to head into a smaller, maybe closer knit stadium um, that they're going to be playing at in LA. The artist formerly known as the San Diego Chargers, <laughs> um, and I think I I will pick the Chiefs in that game. I think it's going to be closer than a lot of Chiefs fans are comfortable with. Though, mm-hmm. um, some other games that I've seen this week that look fairly good. 
Falcons-Lions, a pair of undefeated teams in the NFC. That's going to be at noon on Fox. And uh, Chiefs game 325 on CBS. Mm. Uh, we forgot to mention, but <laughs> the, on Fox – at noon, Falcons Lions. That'll be a pretty good game. A pair of undefeated teams. A pair of very good quarterbacks. Mm. And the most high or the highest paid quarterback in the league at the moment, Matthew Stafford, uh, is looking to tear apart that uh, Falcons defense, much like Tom Brady did in last year's Super Bowl. Uh, another game that does interest me. Uh, the uh, oh, I just lost it. Uh, Seahawks Titans. Uh, it's it's in Tennessee. Um, the Seahawks. Their offense has kind of struggled struggled this year. Um, well, we'll see what they can do against you know kind of not a lackluster defense, but more of a, a mediocre uh, Titans defense, especially in that secondary. I I think there's a few holes in it, and I think that Russell Wilson, uh, you know, just might find his confidence this game and throw all over the uh, Tennessee Titans. Um, personally, Marcus Mariota is my uh, fantasy quarterback at the moment, so uh, we'll see what he can do against you know a very talented uh, Seattle secondary. I, I think it has the potential to be a very low-scoring game, and I think it has the potential to be a very high-scoring game. So I, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, that's definitely one of the games that I'm going to be watching the entirety of. And two big points in that game for me are the fact that if Seattle wants to win more than eight or nine games this year mm. and be a threat in the NFC, they're going to have to get better on the offensive line. Yeah. Their offensive line has been abysmal in the last two weeks, mm. and they need to get better on the offensive line. The Titans need to get better defensively. Uh, so these are two teams that have a lot to improve on. They're very similar offensively. Mm -hmm. um, the Titans, I think, have a stronger running game. But the okay. Seahawks, I, both quarterbacks are the, the run-and-gun kind of quarterbacks, the guys that they'll get out of the pocket. They can hurt you with their legs, but one of the things, the biggest thing you need to look for is their ability to throw when they're outside the pocket. Mm. I think Russell Wilson is more experienced and a little bit better at that mm -hmm. than Marcus Mariota is. So uh, I think the Seahawks have the advantage because of their defense and mm -hmm. because of Russell Wilson. Um, but these are two teams that if they can make those improvements, the Titans to their defense, the Seahawks to their offensive line, they're going to be two very dangerous teams in their respective conferences. And one other game I want to touch on is uh, Raiders at Redskins on Sunday night on NBC. Uh, a very good football game, potentially. The Raiders with one of what could be by midseason one of the best offenses in the AFC and is already right now but once they develop even more could be very very dangerous and the Redskins with a quarterback in Kirk Cousins that threw for over 5,000 yards last year off to an okay start this year mm -hmm. I think this is a game where you look at two teams that have very good offenses questionable defenses there could be a lot of points in this game mm. Uh, another game that I feel like has kind of flown under the radar is the game on Thursday night. We've got the L.A. Rams versus the San Francisco 49ers. The reason why this interest, interests me is uh, we've got two new head coaches for both these teams, Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan. Um, and each one of these coaches are trying to prove that it's not going to be more of the same last year or as last year. Sean McVay is off to a pretty good start with the Rams. Their offense, you know, has life to it. They look like they're energized out there. Todd Gurley is doing well. Uh, uh, Jared Goff has finally um, shown flashes of what he's capable of doing. Uh, and then the Niners, of course, uh, we got Carlos Hyde's really one of the, you know, the biggest threat on that offense. But uh, again, you know, Kyle Shanahan's trying to prove that it's not going to be, you know, more of the same, more of the, you know, same old 49ers we've seen in the past in two, three years of, you know, two and 14 seasons. So I, I think it'll be good. And I, I really like the coaching matchup. That's one reason it, it interests me. Yeah, and I, I can agree with that. Unfortunately, I don't think it interests anybody else no, in the San exactly. Francisco area. Yeah. <laughs> um, because Levi's Stadium may very well be almost empty for that game, as mm. it was the last uh, last week as well. Uh, one other game I want to look at is we have a morning game on Sunday. What? 8.30 a.m. from Wembley Stadium in London. Ravens Jaguars. Yeah, that's an early one. It is an early one. A couple of, uh, I don't want to say not sexy teams in the NFL, but these are two teams that the Ravens just grind it out and win football games, mm -hmm. and the Jaguars are kind of a question mark this year. But yeah. but this game from London, uh, Yahoo Sports is going to have this one at 8.30 in the morning. So if you're up early on Sunday for some reason, or if maybe before church, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're a churchgoer, or maybe you're just up early on Sunday for no apparent reason, um, <laughs> 8.30 o'clock, yeah, that's yeah. it. 8.30 in the morning, uh, 
Ravens Jaguars from London. Mm-hmm. So uh, some interesting games this week in the NFL. I know we'll be watching, and I'm sure a lot of people around will as well. Uh, that has been the X106 podcast for That's today. Right. I want to thank Evan Brown, as uh, as always, for being with me. I'd like and, to thank uh, you, Mr. Ryan Elliott. <laughs> and chatting it up a little bit about some, some football, some baseball. So.